it's a uh, disastrous policy to take um, extensive debt for the Philippines um, under uh, conditions that are not uh, transparent. And that's the situation here. Uh, Diogno has said that uh, the Chinese have asked him to keep the interest rate secret, which I think should be a red flag for everybody. I don't know if you know this, but our economic secretary actually called you an ignoramus after that article was published. Uh, his point being that the country, first of all, is not limited to borrowing from China. And also, the government uh, keeps insisting that the ratio will be more like 80% internally funded and 20% from borrowings. What do you make of that? Well, it's not exactly the, lo the source of the funding that matters. It's the interest rate that matters. So whether it's local or international lending, um, the interest rate and other conditions that are connected to that uh, have a big effect. So um, if the, th there can be hidden interest, essentially, if there are conditions in the loans that require, um, for example, Chinese companies to do the work, where the Philippine uh, workers, uh, high-skilled workers, wouldn't have an opportunity to actually do work on those projects. So the money never even leaves China. Uh, but the debt comes to the Philippines. Does it matter at all that uh, the Philippines at the moment, because of the foreign policy pivot, is generating quite a number of interest as far as ODAs are concerned? I'm talking about official development assistance here, which, uh, historically speaking, do come at very low interest rates. Well, the Japanese, for example, um, have much lower interest rates than China is offering, according to some of the Philippine officials. So I think that should be a concern as well. I think that some of your ODA or soft loans coming from Japan, the United States, World Bank, those places are going to be much better deals than the Chinese loans. And those are the soft Chinese loans. We're not even talking about what I would call the hard Chinese loans or higher rate, higher interest rate loans. So a lot of the discussion, the public discussion, has been focused on soft loans. But that's not the sum total of the loans. There will be higher interest rate loans. Um, and I would, I would ask that you know, it be more transparent in terms of um, the, uh, the, the, the rates, the interest rates of non-ODA loans or non-soft loans. What's your best guess here as to why the interest rates are being kept opaque at this stage? I think it's due to um, just in general these agreements from China are opaque because they include conditionalities that will not be popular, for example, that uh, loans be paid back in uh, commodities rather than uh, cash. So if the commodity prices drop, for example, as they did in Venezuela with oil, then the amount of, uh, of uh, payback that you have to give is quite a bit higher. So um, someone said, oh, we're going to pay back. Someone said to me, it's no problem. We're going to pay back our, our loans to China and bananas. Well, that's a lot of bananas, and also, um, if the price of bananas drops, then you're paying back more bananas than you expected in the first place. Now, obviously, that's not going to be the only way that Philippines pays back its loan to China, but it's, it's a big consideration. And there are many technical issues in this, these deals that if they're not made public and not seriously considered and examined by auditors uh, beforehand and voted on by the Congress, then you're likely to get a bad deal. All right, Anders, uh, what's the worst case scenario here then? Could the Philippines end up being forced into certain concessions in the long term? Right, so what you see um, in some countries is, I, I believe what you're going to see potentially uh, are political concessions. Some of, the, some of the political concessions that China will be looking for will be joint, develop it, joint development in the South China Sea in terms of oil and gas, uh, or even on Benham Rise. Um, so, or uh, conditions in terms of how Philippines votes in the UN. Um, I think China puts pressure on some of the countries that are under its influence uh, for voting, um, how Philippines votes in ASEAN. All of these will be up for bargaining once China gets more influence into uh, the Philippine government. And this is one way for them to do it. Well, you know what? The government at the moment is already uh, quite open to uh, the idea of joint exploration with China over the disputed waters. How does this change things then, if they're already willing to go into it together? Well, I don't think that has been fully agreed. I think that's still being bargained. 
but the Philippine bargaining position on that will be much less. So, for example, normally a country in its own EEZ will get all 100% of the royalties from oil and gas. If China imposes joint development on the Philippines um, for whatever reason uh, and from what, with whatever bargaining leverage, then the Philippines may have to share those royalties, for example, 50-50 with China or 25, even 25 percent Philippines, 75 percent China. So this is, a, this is a real danger and it's a, it's a long-term danger for the Philippines in terms of losing all of, the, all of that, uh, those resources and that uh, source of foreign exchange uh, from oil and gas in the South China Sea and on Benham Rise.